Hello YouTube, my name is Nero, I'll take me some more Call of Duty World War 2, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So today Sledgehammer Games released a preview for the Resistance DLC, which is the first map pack coming to Call of Duty World War 2. In that preview, we saw gameplay of three multiplayer maps, a new Nazi Zombies map, and a new War map. So what I thought we would do here today is show you guys that preview in its entirety without my commentary over it. And after that, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and feelings on each new map and the DLC as a whole. If you guys would like to go ahead and skip the preview and get right to my thoughts on the matter there's a timestamp on your screen right now but i highly recommend watching the entire preview first because it's really well put together with that out of the way ladies and gentlemen let's hop right into the video call of duty world war ii was about honoring the story of the world's costliest war and with the resistance dlc pack we really get to continue that story this next chapter really puts you in the heart of being a resistance fighter we're really gonna take you from three iconic resistance themed maps, a brand new war MP map, and our next chapter of Nazi Zombies. For the DLC season, we are very much pulling from historical reference to try to make a really holistic DLC theme. Early on, resistance was something that really struck a chord with the team. It was something that we were really passionate about. We got a real taste for it in the single player campaign. Tonight, we take back our city. These were not just your standard soldiers. These were civilians. These were everyday people who were fighting on the Allied side. People were in disguises. They were underground. Clandestine operations took place in speakeasies like this around Europe, where they tried to disrupt the Axis and German war machine. There's so many ways to resist, and there are so many different types of resistance uh, efforts, from the German resistance to the Czech resistance to the French resistance. So each operated differently. We're depicting that in each map. Our first map is Valkyrie, set in Prussia, Hitler's Wolf's Lair. That's where a group of officers tried to kill Hitler, but also as many other uh, high-ranking officers as they could. We wanted to design that map for multiple play styles. The outsides of the map, there's a lot of sniper lanes there, but if you work your way through the middle spaces and through some of these other um, different bunkers, you're gonna have a lot of run and gun, you're gonna have a lot of shotgun. So our second map is Anthropoid, set in occupied Prague in the Czech Republic. It's the assassination attempt of the second hand of Hitler. He was in charge of controlling the city of Prague. So it's an urban map, but this map has a lot of height variation as well as some really strong, tight interiors that are gonna give a real wide variety of gameplay. We're really proud of bringing back a Modern Warfare 3 favorite map, Resistance, which is called Occupation in our game. It's set in Paris. Well, that was so iconic to the Resistance movement that it was important for us to have that map. It's on the neighborhood of uh, Montmartre, uh, so you can actually see the Eiffel Tower in the distance. Long sidelines, so you get a lot of play with mountain division, and you can bring out your LMGs, put them up on ledges. It's still a really fun map. Of course, we've got a brand new war mode called Operation Intercept. And this places you right in the heart of the FFI, or the French Forces of the Interior. The great thing about War Mode is we really get to try things that are really new and unique that you haven't seen before. Fans are going to be excited about the mechanics in War Mode and how they coincide with the theme of the map. Your first objective is to rescue your resistance fighters. After that, you capture some radio equipment and you lead the attack. And the next chapter in Nazi Zombies, The Darkest Shore, the most terrifying chapter we brought to date. For this next chapter in the game, our characters, they've uh, received intel about the movement of Dr. Straub. He's gone to this foggy island just north of Germany. We really wanted to play with something new in this map. We, we wanted to play with this idea of what happens when fog rolls in. You can't see them until they're five feet away from you. It's really creepy. There's a sense of things that could come out from the fog. For the Darkest Shore is that we have a new weapon called the Ripsaw. My favorite weapon in the game thus far. It is a combination buzzsaw, gun, and it handles zombies up close and at a distance. 
We've gotten experimental with some of the, uh, the gameplay here, and we've created a new zombie. This is a zombie that is clever, that is strategic. It is uh, one of the scariest creations that I've ever seen. There's a lot of content in this DLC package. This is something that we put a lot of heart and soul into, so it's really important to us that these maps will deliver on fans' high expectations. We're looking forward to the next DLC because we get to talk about different phases of the conflict and explore different parts of the world. It's the biggest, most exciting DLC we've ever offered. And we can't wait for you to get your hands on The Resistance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the official preview for the Resistance DLC, which is scheduled to release on January 30th for the PlayStation 4 first. Let's go ahead and start talking about the multiplayer maps, the first of which is going to be Valkyrie, otherwise known as Wolf's Lair. So Wolf's Lair, for those who don't know, was the first Eastern Front military headquarters for Adolf Hitler during World War II. It fits the theme of the Resistance DLC quite well because there was actually an attempt to assassinate Adolf Hitler here using a bomb hidden inside of a brief case as part of Operation Valkyrie, which is where the map gets its name. The attempt would ultimately fail with Adolf Hitler surviving the attack. As for the multiplayer map itself, it's described as being designed for multiple play styles. So the outside area of the map, the foresty area, is going to have some very long sight lines, which of course are going to be good for snipers and rifles and light machine guns, whereas the interior of the map is going to be very run and gun, as you may imagine, for a headquarters location like this where people are living and working. I wish we got to see more of the map itself. I keep showing you guys the same couple of clips over and over here, and the reason why I'm doing that is because these are the only instances throughout the entirety of today's preview where we were able to see the Valkyrie map. I imagine once we get closer to January 30th, they are going to release a proper gameplay trailer, which will show us a lot more of the map, but for right now, this is all we have to go on, but I'm still very excited for the Valkyrie multiplayer map. Next up, we have Anthropoid, which is going to be set in Occupied Prague, and the reason why it's called Anthropoid was back in 1942, the Czech government plotted to assassinate Reinhard Heydrich here in Prague as part of Operation Anthropoid. They were successful, but they were pretty sloppy about it. It came down to somebody throwing an anti-tank grenade at Heydrich's car, and he would later die from his wounds in a hospital. When it comes to the multiplayer map itself, it's going to be an urban map that is said to have a lot of height variation, which is something we don't have a ton of here in Call of Duty World War II, so I'm excited for that. And based on the limited gameplay that was shown to us here today, it also looks like this map is going to have some longer lines of sight, so I'm excited for the map itself, though unfortunately we don't know too much about it. And finally, we have Occupation, which is going to be the remake of Resistance from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I loved Resistance back in that game. It was one of the best maps in Modern Warfare 3, and I'm excited to see it return this year, but the downside to that is we are only going to be getting three standard multiplayer maps as part of this DLC, and only two of them are actually new, which is kicking up quite a lot of controversy online. Next up, we have our war map. It's going to be Operation Intercept. Now, it's going to be set in occupied France and deal heavily with the French Resistance, some of the objectives are going to include rescuing resistance fighters, capturing radio equipment, escorting a tank, and doing all the other wonderful things that we're used to doing in the war game mode. Honestly, I'm excited for this map because I'm really bored of the other war maps. I think war is a lot of fun here in Call of Duty World War II, but playing the same three maps over and over and over gets kind of boring for me. So I think pretty much everybody is excited for Operation Intercept. And finally, we have the new zombies map, The Darkest Shore. So our characters are hunting Dr. Straub and it leads them here off the shore of Germany, the map will have a heavy focus on fog, a brand new gameplay mechanic, and there will also be a new weapon called the Ripsaw. I am very excited for this map here. I've been playing a lot of zombies as of recently, and I cannot wait for a brand new map to come out, new things to explore, new things to do. And when it comes to zombies maps, they're typically so good that people buy DLC just to play the brand new zombies map, and I imagine that's going to be true this year as well. Overall, I am very excited for the Resistance DLC. I cannot wait for new content to be added to the game. The maps look incredible. The war map looks awesome. Awesome. Zombies looks fantastic, but of course, it's always going to be tainted by the question of how much of this content was actually cut from the base game to be sold in this DLC pack. For those that don't know or don't remember, the map Valkyrie and the map Occupation were in the game files of the beta, which says to a lot of us, myself included, that they were originally intended to be part of the launch release. They were supposed to be in the game by default, but for some reason, they were cut and repackaged as DLC, which is really scummy if you think about it. The 
The downside to that theory is we can't confirm if it's actually true. It's entirely possible that the reason why they were in the beta game files is because they were not yet finished and they were still being worked on. And if that's the case, well, it's not nearly as scummy. But of course, Sledgehammer Games hasn't come out and said one way or the other, so we really have no idea. All we really know is the Resistance DLC is coming out on January 30th for the PlayStation 4 first and will be coming to the Xbox One and the PC 30 days later, likely on March 1st. And I'm personally pretty excited for it because, again, new content is always awesome here in the Call of Duty franchise. But ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this down there in the comment section below. Will you be picking up the Resistance DLC and what platform will you be picking it up on? I'd love to hear about that down there in the comment section below. I hope you guys all enjoy. Drop me a rating and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.